Hitman's Bodyguard just barely ekes out as the top in box office sales in the UK for this weekend. No Man's Sky gets a newer, bigger, and better update. And also, should esports be allowed in the Olympics? I'm Andrew Dornan, and this is my show, What's New? So, we're back. It has been way too goddamn long. Uh, I think the last episode was, I think it was in, I think it was still the fall semester of our senior year in high school, because I distinctly remember, um, oh, spring, couldn't think of the word spring for a second there, spring semester is when, uh, the sh- really hit the fan as far as, uh, people being busy goes, and now here we are at university in our dorm holy crap We're caring this, uh, yeah See? we are See? caring we care enough to, to bring this video to, to record this video to bring back this show and honestly it felt good and honestly i completely forgot that i wanted to bring back the show and it wasn't until uh dan was out at lunch i was like dan we need to record an episode of what's new and he's like sure with a period, just <laughs> sure. I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> great." I asked, I honestly forgotten about this too. Yeah, uh, it, it's definitely been something I wanted to bring back for like a whole year. I'm pretty sure it was approved and, in our last meeting too. Yeah. Let's move on to our very first topic of the show, and that's the battle for the box office top of the charts uh the hitman's bodyguard versus dunkirk so for this weekend alone um the hitman's bodyguard made about 1.98 million u.s dollars which is or 1.98 million british pounds my bad and that i wrote it down because i would never uh remember it comes out to about um 2.56 uh million US dollars the exact amount by the way is two million five hundred and sixty one thousand two hundred and ninety eight dollars and thirty cents. That's that's the thing that got me when I saw that conversion. I was like phone The Hitman's bodyguard made that amount and then Dunkirk for this weekend uh made um about two point uh made one point nine four million British pounds, which comes to about uh, 2.5 million US dollars, which the exact amount is uh, 2,509,778 United States dollars, which means there was a difference that Hitman Bodyguard made the equivalent of $51,520.30 more than Dunkirk for uh, getting into the uh, the number one slot of the top ten in UK box office sales for the weekend. But in total, Dunkirk actually came out on top uh, with total sales of 49.1 million pounds, which comes out to, I have it written down, uh, 63,534,418 United States dollars. That's a lot of money. I can't, I can't imagine a stack of money that is precisely that amount. I imagine just this whole room filled with cash and then being like, damn, that's a lot of money. <laughs> so, I know neither of us have seen Hitman's Bodyguard, full disclosure. Um, I've been wanting to, and I just kept uh, forgetting. But, we have both seen Dunkirk. And Dunkirk was a really good movie, in my opinion. Uh, did you like it? Yeah. It. it on- was- Go on. I honestly, I have yet to find a film done by Christopher Nolan that has been terrible. Maybe I'm just biased, and maybe you're right. Now, what did you think? Um, it was a lot different from the type of movie I usually go out and see. But I still enjoyed it. Um, I was kind of impressed with how, like, well they're able to do that. 
Yeah. Um, so, okay, I need, I need to ask a question. Sure. What is the Hitman's Bodyguard about? Now, while we haven't seen the Hitman's Bodyguard, we have seen Valerian. And I didn't see Valerian on that top ten. But since we're talking about movies, we're going to go on a tangent. Oh, yeah, Val Valerian was a box office bomb. It uh, didn't make, it didn't even break even. Yeah, that, that was a shame because I watched it and I was like, that's a good movie. Yeah, I enjoyed I, it. Obviously, there were some parts where I was like, eh, but for the most part, I liked it. But yeah, I think the movie overall was um, was pretty good. Um, I think there was like um, there there was the the plot twist, which we're not really going to discuss about. But there was there was a plot twist where one of the characters turned out. Uh, not not one of the protagonists, but just one of the characters that helps the protagonist. Uh, turns out they were evil the whole time, and it was kind of one of those things that you could kind of figure out as you were watching. Like that guy feels like a a textbook villain who's gonna show up at the end and be like, "Surprise! I was the reason you're all here." I didn't really think that was supposed to be a plot twist, honestly. Yeah, it, I thought it was supposed to be dramatic irony. Kinda, I guess. I don't know. Um, it was weird. Really. Off of that, <laughs> uh, let's actually move on uh, from that. So, overall, Valerian is a great movie. Um, not sure if I would watch it again. To be honest, it was great, <laughs> but it wasn't enough to make me want to see it again. I don't, I don't know if you could call it great and then say I don't want to see it again. It was good. It was pretty good. Uh, no Man's Sky. Have you seen, heard of, experienced No Man's Sky in any capacity? I can't remember for the life of me if you said you did or not. Not really. No. Um, I watched my roommate from last year play it, and he just complained about how it sucked, and that you could give plants stupid nicknames. And that's basically all I know about the game. Yeah, um, so the developer Hello Games, um, more like Goodbye Games... <laughs> Um, they More like hell game. <laughs> okay, go on. Anyways, um, so Hello Games um, released the first trailer of No Man's Sky way back when, and um, it started generating hype, and they rode on that hype, and then. I'm not sure if he was the CEO or the head developer, but he was he was a dude of significant importance. I can't remember his name for the life of me. Um, it's on screen now. Um, or maybe not. Who knows? Um, basically, he started making some claims um, that the game does have multiplayer, although the chances of finding another player are really slim. Turns out that was just you, could, you couldn't find another player. Even if both of you were on the same exact planet at the same exact coordinates, you wouldn't be able to see each other. That's all dust under the rug because Hello Games is developing a brand new free update called the Atlas Rise, Rises Riser. What 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 the hell did I say? Atlas Rises is um, what the new update is called. So. Um, to put this in perspective, No Man's Sky released August, uh, what did I say, 9th? Yeah, August 9th, 2016, or 2016, if you don't have much time. Um, so since then, people have been like, ugh, No Man's uh, Skies, or what a crap game, whenever you ask them about it. Uh, but with the Atlas Rises uh, update, not DLC, update, because they've learned their lesson, uh, there are some new items! So, I've got them all written down here. Actually, it's on my computer, but we're viewing it off of a thing. Um, so, the, the biggest thing is that, just by looking at everything, it is very possible that we're going to get real multiplayer, like in games like um, Elite Dangerous. That's what it's called. Uh, <laughs> I forgot the names of all the games. Um, 
But yes, yeah, so you know, Elite Dangerous had, you know, it was a multiplayer game. Like, there, there wasn't really single player. You could go off on your own, but you're still going to find players um, wherever you go. I think Star Citizen's kind of like that, too. Yeah, Star Citizen is definitely like that. Um, also, No Man's Skies was heavily criticized for there not being a story that you could follow if you didn't want to just mine all the time. Um, there was no story, there was no, um, there really wasn't a plot, per se. You are just a dude with a ship, and you go and do things, I guess. Um, but, uh, now, there's gonna be an actual story. What is that story? Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, but it's gonna be a whole lot better than trying to find a planet with an ancient rune so you can learn one word of an alien language. Yeah. I mean, you can still do that, but now there's going to be a story that you can follow. Um, also, um, when, I'm going to skip a thing and then come back to it. Uh, Dogfighting and flying your ship was very easy. What sci-fi game do you know of that has super easy spaceship combat. You can say a Battlefront game. Yeah, that's the only one I can think of. Yeah. I mean, the ones in, the one in Halo Reach was also, like, the one level they had. Yeah, the... It wasn't bad. Yeah, but take that and then make it even more simple with autopilot uh, tracking. Because, like, even with um, uh, the, the PSP Battlefront games, like, they had lock-on, but... For the most part, that was just there for convenience sake. It wasn't like, oh, you're in combat, let me lock on to you right away. Um, that's what the combat was um, for No Man's Sky. It was very easy. You just had to point and shoot. And you didn't really have to worry about um, really resource management. Um, but they've increased the difficulty. They will increase the difficulty in uh, dogfighting. So, you have to think about power levels and fuel uh, and stuff like that. Also, when in combat, or just flying the ship in general, your ship's autopilot would make it so you wouldn't crash into the planet's surface. Which, for me, uh, feels very frustrating because sometimes you just want to just want to take that, that pristine hunk of a ship that you just put together and then ram it straight into the ground so you can get the insurance money to buy a new ship. So, with I this... I think that's just you, your man. Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> um, snorted on the show. Um, but yeah, so, autopilot, it's not going to be super handholdy. Um, it's It's trying to be better... As far as, you know, doing stuff with your ship goes. Kind of kind of like Elite Dangerous. Um, where, you know, it's not hand-holdy at all. Unless you tweak a few things. Um, but for the most part, um, it's still going to be kind of easy. But it's, it's going to be more difficult than just point and shoot. Press a button. Oh, look. He's hurt. Um, also, uh, better trading! Trading is a big thing. So, as I was saying, um, trading is a very big thing in a lot of um, space simulator games. And there wasn't really a lot to it in No Man's Sky. And uh, with this new update, they're going to be doing a... Um, they're going to change a lot of things with trading. They're going to make it you know feel like you're actually doing something than just pressing buttons to try to up your credits. Like, you gotta think about, like, economies and, um, you know, what your effect is on that solar system. Kind of like in, um, the X series of games. I'm not sure if you've... I, I doubt you've played them. Have you? There's X, Beyond the Frontier, Extension. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, so there was a thing that I, that I wanted to go back on. Um, that was guilds! Guilds! You have a purpose! And there are three guilds. There are the Merchant's Guild, the Explorer's Guild, and the Mercenary's Guild. And uh, the way you get into them is pretty straightforward. Uh, Merchant's Guild, you just do a lot of trading. Um, I think you got to reach like a max capital. It wasn't really clear. Explorer's Guild was um, 
I think you basically sign up to be a cartographer, and then you go around and you chart different planets. There's, I, th- I think they said there's over 30 trillion planets, and I think uh, somebody did the math, and it would take uh, th- upwards of 300 years to go and discover all the planets if everybody who bought the game worked together. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, but you could do that. Um, just dump your dump your consciousness into the game so all you do is play that game forever. This <laughs> sounds like a very boring existence. It really it really does. Um, I know there there have been some some kind of just a lot of crap thrown out. Uh, all of it's been at the um, the mechanics of the game. The game itself actually looks uh, pretty beautiful, like lots of vibrant colors. Um, there's definitely a lot of variety in um, in the planets, in the plant life, in the animals. Um, one thing that's uh, kind of interesting is you can, if you're the first person to discover something, you can you have the ability to name it, and so some people have uh, created some interesting names I'm not gonna list them here but if you could if you looked at a dinosaur and went that looks like a penis then somebody's probably named it uh, penosaurus or something similar because that's the way <laughs> we live our lives as gamers um, but yeah um, there's also a third guild called the mercenaries guild and you basically do that um, uh, I wasn't too terribly sure on it, but I think um, pretty much how it is is um, you do a lot of contracts uh, with taking out pirates, taking out um, uh, cargo ships, um, partaking in fleet battles. Uh, basically, whatever a mercenary does, that's kind of what you do. Uh, that's pretty to be cool, in. actually. Yeah. Uh, I always wanted to be a mercenary in the X Games, but it takes so long. Um, that you just end up staying as a trader um, for a majority of the game. And it's not until you have an entire trading empire that you're like, Alright! Let's buy some battleships! And let's go blow up some stations! Yay! But then you don't really want to blow up any stations because you have business sites literally all over the galaxy. (laughs) So, those are the consequences for building a trading empire. (laughs) Um, But... Yeah, so overall, uh, No Man's Sky seems... No no Man's Sky um, seems like it's going to get um, a nice overhaul. I might pick it up. It depends. Um, we'll be right back. <laughs> Alright, so we're back. You may have noticed. Um, new shirt. Yeah. Um, a clean person came in, and then we stopped the recording... <laughs> And then I was like, oh, you know what? During this time, I'll pop open a can of raviolis and go down and cook it. Uh, during that time, uh, the maintenance person left, and then I also got ravioli sauce on my shirt. And I was like, I'm not going I'm not going to continue the video with ravioli on my shirt. So, yeah, new shirt. <laughs> and then we just didn't eat. Um, yeah. So... When we last left off, um, we were talking about No Man's Sky. Now, you don't just eat another man's ravioli sauce. What the hell is wrong with you? It's good. It's good. <sighs> Anyways, um, so, the new topic. Should esports be allowed in the Olympics? I say probably no, but... Upon further digging, I did realize, or I did find out that uh, the Olympics have awarded medals for such wonderful sports like town planning, poetry, and dressage. Which, if you're not sure what dressage is, which I was confused for the longest time until I decided to Google it, it's horse ballet. Yeah! It's so weird. I don't even know. They still award medals for that last part, by the way. The the dressage, they still award medals for it. It's weird. It, I don't I don't know. Um, 
They're, um... I honestly... When I first heard about uh, esports trying to get into the Olympics, my immediate thought was why. Uh, I, I don't know about the rest of the gaming community, but I'm pretty content with esports uh, being on national television. I just think that's fine. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. We did it. Can we just go back to not caring about what the nation thought? That's great. I would like those days again. Um... I, I think you had a, you probably had a different viewpoint or a similar viewpoint. What was yours? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same, but I'm not really opposed to the esports being the Olympics, but I also don't think it's necessary. And I think that um, whether or not the Olympics actually adopt it should be based upon, like, for practical reasons. Because most people who watch the Olympics are watching it for, like, physical sports. I, I feel so it makes more sense like since the audiences are separate to have separate events for both uh, different types of things yeah like a video game version of the Olymp Olympics where you got CSGO and football or Madden um, and um, and Overwatch and all those things like yeah. a video game Olympics of yeah. Olympics if you would and even like the official Olympics company could do that or like sponsor that but like maybe, I, I feel as if it'd make more sense to have that at least like on different weeks or something. And um, fun fact, the article um, that I first saw this um, debate brought up uh, actually made some pretty interesting um, points. And uh, one of which was the fact that the Olympics has been really weird about had a weird history with uh, awarding stuff, like I mentioned town planning and dressage. Um, another interesting point was that it could bring younger audiences into viewing the Olympics, potentially like upping the viewership, even if it was just for the video game portion, um, which was really interesting. I I don't know. Maybe I, I I'm I'm the kind of like I'm the kind of person that's like, all right, cool, we got on national television. That's pretty good. I don't think we need anything more. I I think we did it, guys. Good job. You did it. <laughs> um. Yeah, you're you're not you're not as much against it as I am, and I'm pretty like, eh. right. <laughs> Just I don't I don't care. Like I don't really care either. Just, I just uh. I don't know. I'd have a... I'm just wor wondering, like, what would be the most practical thing for the company to do? Yeah. It's all it's all about practicality in the end. Um, but let me know... Let, let us know what you guys think in the comments. Do you like the idea? Do you not like the idea? Do you have ideas like Daniel had? Like of Olympics? Uh, or a... a I was gonna combine tournament and video game, and it did not come out right. I was like a Valorant, <laughs> a Delorean. <laughs> um, but nah, I mean, it's all I get. Like Dan said, it's up to the people who run the Olympics. That being said, the dude who runs the Olympics said that he didn't see a spot for video games in it. But the president of the Olympics gets voted in and out, so we'll see. It's just a waiting game. I mean, we just got it on national television, so I think we should wait a while um, before I guess it's socially acceptable or whatever. I, mean, I wouldn't say that it's socially unacceptable now. But, yeah. Uh, I just don't think like the same people are interested in that, generally. They're interested in physical sports. Yeah. But. I mean, there are some exceptions, obviously. But, like, I'm pretty sure if they announced, like, eSports as being the Olympics, you'd see all of our friends in, like, our Skype group chat saying, like, I don't care about the sports part, I just want to see video games. Yeah. And then you'd probably see people like my my family who are like, oh, man, they're putting all this video game crap in here now. It's ruined. <laughs> the sanctity of the Olympics is ruined. <laughs> the sanctity of the Olympics. So... 
Yeah, that's that's pretty much how this whole thing kind of boils down to. It's kind of an odd topic because you can't really divulge in it that much. But let us know uh, what you think down in the comments. And I, yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these shows, so like, uh, kind of feels weird because it's like, I mean, we we had a couple of good topics. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna do the classic sign off that I've done. So you ready for this? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't subscribe, um, if you enjoyed the video, if you didn't like the video, that's why the dislike button is there. And tell me why you didn't like it in the comment section below. I'm Andrew Dorn, and this has been my show. What's new?